Hmm. I'm confused. Should we even call this a script? Either way, shortest script ever. Welcome to my review of Silent Night, the latest from director John Woo, and is the first American film he has made in 20 years. Last one being Paycheck, which is a film I've never seen, but I intend to. Thank you so much, guys, for clicking here. I really appreciate it. So after losing his baby boy, his son, in a gang shootout, an aggrieving father exudes revenge on the people responsible. That right there was enough to get me in the seat. Speaking of John Woo, I've always been a fan of his films, particularly Hard Target. Uh, even the Mission Possible 2, which everybody puts that at the bottom of the barrel, if you get past all the John Woo style slow-mo and doves and all that, you get like a 35-45 minute movie, but I still thought it was pretty decent. It's not as bad as a lot of people always seem to put it in, but I enjoyed it for the most part. I hadn't seen all of his movies. Like, I've seen a little bit of Face Off. I know the first film he did was Hard Boiled, or one of the first films he did was Hard Boiled, which is basically a foreign film. I've not seen that one, but a lot of his films I need to get caught up on. But with Silent Night, I've always been intrigued by the whole entire revenge plot story, which is why I've always been a fan of characters like The Punisher. And that's what I kind of thought of this movie as being, like a... Christmas themed Punisher type film which after seeing it not so much but it does have elements it does have elements of Punisher but slightly I jumped at the chance at seeing Silent Night as soon as they advertised it I was counting down the days I enjoy a good you know Christmas themed action film even though these aren't technically themed Christmas action films, I still consider them to be Christmas theme action films in the first two Die Hards and Lethal Weapon. I even loved David Harbour's Violent Night, which we got last year. That one was my all-time favorite of that year of 2022. But was Silent Night any different? Did this film satisfy my action high? Let's find out and start with the positives. I do admit, Joel Kinnaman was excellent. For a guy that could not speak throughout this whole entire movie. By the way, this whole movie is dialogue free. Which, I'll get into that more later. But, Joel Kinnaman, I always respect him as an actor. The first one I've seen was the remake of Robocop. Which wasn't as good as the original, you know, of course. But, I thought he was good in that part. And then, Run All Night. And then, even both the Suicide Squad films. And, I've noticed something about this guy. And it's kind of sad, really, because he is a great actor, but they always pick parts for him. He always picks parts. I don't know if it's on him or his agency, but he always picks movies that either gets bashed financially or critically. This guy deserves to be in something that actually succeeds 90% at least. I thought he's a like pretty good actor, pretty Oscar-worthy, in my opinion, anyway. And his delivery in Silent Night, even without any dialogue, because he's basically a grieving father who gets shot in the throat, and he ends up having to get a tracheotomy, tracheotomy, or I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and he, he can't speak. He can't speak at all. And the performance he gave in Silent Night was actually pretty good. You know, I felt his pain, I felt his misery, and he just... Basically, he turns into this Punisher type character around Christmas time. I know not a lot of people saw it like that, especially the way the rest of this movie was. And believe me, there is some grievances I have, which I'll get into later, but still. That's how I always pegged it, especially before going in. It's basically a Punisher type character without a voice. But I've always respected Joel Kinnaman. I, I just hope that they put him in something well worth it. And something that, you know one day people can realize that this guy's really good and he's finally in a movie that's worthwhile. The action set pieces was pretty cool. This is a little different from other John Woo films, but they still have elements in it to, to where it reminds you that you're watching a John Woo type film. There's a couple slow-mo camera action scenes, and especially with him fighting and shooting everybody up, and there's even a scene with doves and birds in it, which that's the thing that John Woo tends to do a lot. And I think that's what a lot of John Woo fans 
signaturize his films for. I mean, there's a lot of dove. There's like, there's always got to be one scene of doves and flying birds. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a John Woo film. But this was a little different. I, I think considering it's it's a little lower budgeted than most of John Woo's earlier films, but it still does remind you that it is a John Woo directed film. It still manages to kind of throw you back into how he used to do American time films. But I've always respected him as a filmmaker. I and mean, I'm glad he's finally getting back into the American made films and I'm, I can't wait to see what he does next. Now, no matter what I say next, I'm trying not to sound contradictory. If I am, I apologize. But there was a lot of problems that this movie had. Going into this, I knew what I was getting into. I knew there was going to be absolutely no dialogue whatsoever, which brings me to my negatives. The whole entire movie had no dialogue whatsoever. The main character, as I said before, gets shot in the throat. He gets a tracheotomy. That's perfectly understandable. But what really ticked me off about it is because, because you have no dialogue, you don't get to find out that much about the characters and whether or not you want to be invested in them. Me, personally, I couldn't get invested in a majority of them because they chose to not have anyone talk. Not Joe Kinnaman's character's wife, not the cop that helps him out eventually, and not even the gangbangers. Nobody. This was, like, completely dialogue-free. And at a certain point, I was watching this movie, I don't even think they even brought a microphone on set. Uh, maybe the wife did say a couple words, but it was very faint. It's like watching one of those 1930 silent films. That's kind of what it reminded me of. I just wish they would have at least applied that to just Joel Kinnaman's character. That's how I would have pictured it, you know, benefiting the movie a little better. If they'd have just referred to Joel Kinnaman's character as the Silent Night character going after these bad guys, Punisher style, but letting everybody else speak, that would have benefited it a little bit better, I would think. And they would have just referred to Joel Kinnaman's character as the Silent Night killer. It would have been still plausible to the title. They really live up to the title's name, yes, I do admit that. But it still would have been plausible, it still would have made sense if they'd have just kept everybody else opening their mouths <laughs> and speaking, except for Joe Kidman's character. The, the, the title still would have made sense if they'd have just gone that route, but they didn't. There were certain scenes to where you see his character going into the police station and you think something's going to happen. Something's going to be said, but it never does. I always thought that was weird. Again, I knew what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be dialogue-free, so none of that was lost on me. But it was it still felt weird. It's the first film in my whole entire life that I've seen a movie done like this. But because of that, it just didn't give any of the characters room to breathe. You don't get to find out anything about any of them. Other than Joel Kinnaman's character, who was awesome in it, you don't even get to care about the main villains, the, the gangbangers. I mean, they're, they're just completely forgettable. <laughs> so that was a definite disappointing factor, which again begs the question, should we even call this a script? I, I, I don't know. Uh, an actionary, a, a disciplinary, I don't know. <laughs> there wasn't nothing there because of that, and it said that somebody has wrote the film, but wrote what? <laughs> I'm not trying to bash the filmmakers or anything, but <laughs> to have a script writer, you need dialogue, which it was none there. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's just no investment. There's no build-up. Because of that, it just it was just weird all around. It just felt very odd and very short-changed. Another disappointing factor in this is they spent a lot more time than they should have on flashback scenes. And you get reminded all the time that Joel Kinnaman's character has lost his kid. And they spent way too many times on flashbacks of him playing with his kid, which that, that's fine and all. But I would think that all they would need is just the first, like the one scene where he loses his kid and he goes after him. That's all you really need. But they spend way too much time and it kind of makes it for a little bit of a painful experience. You don't need to be reminded all the time, like every five minutes of that. And because of that, the pacing does slow down a little bit, especially during the second act. And with him trying to get ready to get after these bad guys... That I could have stood, but they just spend way too much time in the past, and 
I just felt like that was a little bit unnecessary and it would have benefited the movie a little better if they'd have cut a lot of that out and just moved on with it. After the first grieving scene, after it showing what actually happened, that really should have done it. And they should have just moved on from there. Plus the fact that this movie was called Silent Night and it's supposed to be Christmas theme. There wasn't really that much Christmas theme there except for the beginning credit scene and the end credits. You don't even get music. You don't even get Christmas music. You know, there's not really that much of a theme here. And it's supposed to be based around Christmas, but they've thrown nothing in there for you to know that this is a Christmas-type film. And I always thought that was weird, too. That They should have just elaborated a little bit more on that. A little bit more on the holiday theme, and instead of just focusing on everybody not talking, they should have at least built some Christmassy themes to it, but there's really not. That kind of disappointed me as well. At any rate, this wasn't an absolute bust. It wasn't the the worst thing I've seen, but it wasn't the greatest. It had potential, but I felt like they just squandered it in a way. There was some moments. I do tend on watching it again. Maybe my opinion will change. I, that happens all the time. But I, I just... I don't know. I, maybe my expectations were a little bit more higher than it should have been, and... That's on me, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't the worst I've seen. It's got its moments. If you're a John Woo fan, you'll probably get a kick out of this, but if you're not, you just won't. For me, I was on the fence. So Silent Night, what was your thoughts on it? Have you seen it yet? Are you a fan of the whole dumb dialogue thing? Was this the weirdest thing you've ever seen because of that? Was this your favorite? Did this entertain you at all? What is your favorite John Woo film, if not this? Are you ready for Silent Night, Deadly Night? <laughs> or are you somebody who got nothing out of this? Leave me a comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Make sure to click that bell icon, set it to all so you don't miss a thing, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.